Our student presenter today is Natalie Isberg, and I'm excited to introduce her to you. Um, I'm grateful she's brave enough to share her work, so be supportive of her by being attentive and uh, clapping. Um, I know Natalie, uh, besides being a skilled poet, she is a skilled fencer. Um, her pen is as mighty as her sword, and the only thing sharper than her blade is her intellect. So please welcome Natalie to the stage. Hello? You guys hear me all right? All right. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Natalie, and today I'm going to present a poem about senioritis. I never really knew how bad it was, senioritis, until I got there my senior year. I recall being a freshman and thinking to myself, man, I am not motivated at all to do any of my work. There's so much of it. It was like flipping an on and off switch, except the switch didn't always work. I eventually got motivation, the thought of a bad grade chasing away my daydreaming and dawdling. It didn't always work though. My system was a faulty one. Compare it to a leaky faucet, if you will. Freshman year, I was dangling by a paper thin thread because one of my classes was just too difficult. I didn't give up though. Didn't want to transfer out or, in my mind, accept defeat. I wish it were a story of epic heroics, of a C minus remolded to an A because of my hard work and sheer determination. Let's just say it never got there. Sophomore year, I had another class where I just couldn't put in the effort. Whether it was due to my bad habits, my lack of a focus on the subject, but it stung. I felt I was not doing enough. I wish it were a story of redemption, where I end up finding that keystone piece of my motivation, glued into my brain, and become what everyone wanted me to be in that class. Let's just say it never got there. I don't even know where to start with junior year. The lack of a physical building to house my bustling young academic mind was outrageous. I remember sitting at the same desk each day in the same room, the same surroundings for such a long time. I guess I'd taken it for granted before. How simply moving from one class to the next helped my brain transition from one subject to the next. I tried to look on the positive side. I had more free time. I could finally do more with all this time that was suddenly mine. I wish it were a comeback story, where despite the huge difficulties faced that year, I was using my time wisely. I was working out, pursuing personal projects, and so much more. Let's just say it never got there. So, <laughs> senioritis, how bad is it? Well, truth be told, I've felt like this before. Each year, there's always something new to procrastinate on, something new to forget about on accident. In a world where we are taught to put in 100% of our effort for everything we do in a limited amount of time, sometimes we just don't have the time of day. It feels like we squeeze that 100% out, trying to evenly distribute it between a million different things, all requiring the utmost care and attention to detail. So, yeah, I felt a little senioritis, but not just this year, but the other years too. And even before that, and before that. I fell my freshman year, but never stopped trying to climb back up, ripping the thread I was holding close to tears, my mind never folding to the weight of the paper light grade. I fell my sophomore year, but learned along the way, trying to sway myself over to the chorus of voices I wanted to join I am a passion fruit vine, clinging and climbing up the tree I find myself attached to, but not able to bear fruit of passion. I fell my junior year, but found strength to keep going in those around me, my friends, loved ones, family, the ones I care most about, bolster my not so sturdy soul and help lift the clouds from such a dreary looking sky. Yes, it gets hard and rough, but not too tough to tough it out. Because sometimes that's all it takes, a little spark, a little light, and suddenly the arduous road ahead seems a little brighter than before. 
Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Our main event for today features a presenter who exemplifies the best of Writers Expo. We want to celebrate the written word in all its myriad forms and dimensions in Writers Expo. And Mr. Wyzorek, as a math teacher and musician, is a great example of someone who appreciates the power of numbers, the power of music, the power of the written word, and he can put all that together and create art that's beautiful. So please welcome Mr. Wysorek. How's everybody doing? tools ready. <laughs> Happy Friday. How's everybody doing? Good. Are we excited for the weekend? <laughs> Woo! All right. All right. Um, so my name is Cam Wysorek. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a math teacher here at Libertyville High School. Uh, those of you who have had me in the past or currently have me for math, say pi. Pi. All in favor, say pi. They know that joke well. Okay. <laughs> um, so I guess what I'm here today to talk to you about is not math, spoiler. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about how I kind of had my journey and how I became a songwriter and kind of my musical journey. Um, so I guess what I'll start with is, those of you who have had me in class, or if you don't know this, um, it really started with when I was in my student teaching experience back in 2016, I was trying to find ways to make math more memorable for students instead of just doing notes or practice in class. And one thing that I did is I started uh, writing math cover songs or math spoof songs. So what I would do is I would take the lyrics to a popular song um, that I either heard on the radio or something that was very famous from years back and I would spin the lyrics to be about math. Um, if you've listened to my class, they're pretty cheesy. Uh, so I feel like it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing myself a service unless I played you part of a math song. Can I play you just a snippet of one? Okay, okay. I, most of my talk will be focused on other things, but. Um, this is my first tune. I'll play part of it. Um, how many people are fans of Jason Mraz? Any Jason Mraz fans? Okay, so there's a song he wrote called I'm Yours. I'm not going to play the original. I'm going to play you a snippet of a math cover version about Sokotoa. Anybody in geometry right now? Yeah, sine, cos, and tan. Good trigonometry, right? Um, so if you're not, or if you're going to be in geometry next year, this will be more familiar then. But I'll play you a snippet. So... Well, I got a right triangle, bunch of sides are missing can find an angle that's a 30, 45, or 60 I reckon it can't be right, too So what else can I do? My math teacher told me about a thing called Sokotoa A bunch of random letters in a very crazy order And then he said to me You can calculate side C Well, so means sine It's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse and cosine similar it's the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse Ooh, so it's part of it thank you <laughs> <laughs> They're fun to write. Um, so if you want to hear more of that or be educated with math through song, I have a YouTube channel, and I have about 15 or 16 of these, I think. It's Cam Wise Music, because we know my last name is too hard to spell, right? Uh, so it's W-I-Z-E if you're interested in hearing some math tunes. So um, I'm going to focus the rest of my talk, though, on kind of my journey into how I expanded out beyond the math cover songs and how I actually started my, writing my own original music and original lyrics um, that hadn't been developed before. And it really started during COVID, um, back in 2020. I, we all had to quarantine. We remember this in that March. We went home, and we had to just sit at home. And my favorite hobby had been running, and I had done a lot of running, too much running, and I ended up with a stress fracture in my shin. So I was in a boot, 
stuck on the couch, feeling pretty down, and just didn't really know what else to do with my time. And after some days of sulking and just being like, oh, life sucks, I don't want to do this, what is this? I decided, you know what, I'm going to try to like turn my mindset around a little bit and do something that doesn't require my legs. And so I decided to practice the guitar a lot more, which is something I picked up in college more seriously, I would say. I had taken piano lessons growing up, so that was my first instrument. Um, but I wanted to get better at the guitar. And so I, and I didn't want to just get better at learning just some songs. I wanted to practice really like intricate guitar pieces that would really make me focus my time and give me something to do at home. Um, so I, I picked a song that I really liked. Are, does anybody know who John Mayer is? I don't know if this is before your time. <laughs> so he's a famous artist. He does a lot of acoustic music. And there was a song that I really liked by him called Stop This Train, which has a lot of little intricacies. And so it's a song that requires, I would say, 20, 30 hours of practice just to understand how the picking pattern works. So I'd literally sit on my couch to start just doing... Would you guys listen to that all day? <laughs> Sounds better with chords, right? I had to do that for about two hours, just that. And then eventually, I did it slowly. Still kind of boring, right? And then after 30 some hours of practice, I finally was able to get it down and it sounded a little something like this, so it was. watching TV, I was able to at least make that happen. So that was um, part of my COVID experience was getting better at the guitar. Um, and eventually I was able to add words to that song and sing on top of it. So, um, so I reached one goal and I saw, thought, you know, what can I do next that would still challenge me to do something else? And I decided, you know, it would be cool besides just doing math tunes is to actually start singing some actual cover songs from artists. And so that's what I did is I would practice them on the guitar or on the piano I would record myself singing and play them on, or I would record myself singing and playing them, and I put them on my YouTube channel. So I added a separate kind of playlist for just covers of different artists' songs. Um, so everything from, I did some Goo Goo Dolls, some Train, a whole bunch of different stuff. And that was fun. So that kind of got me through summer of 2020. And I was talking to one of my friends shortly after that, and I just mentioned kind of humorously in passing, you know, it'd be kind of cool if after all this COVID is over, it gets better to play just a song at an open mic. And we both kind of laughed about it, and we're like, yeah, that would be cool. Like, down the line, that, that, that'd be, that'd be kind of fun. But we said it not really feeling serious about it, just kind of thinking, okay, yeah, maybe someday it would happen. And I went home and kind of thought about it more, and was like, you know what, that's actually something I really want to do, and that's something that I would really like to work towards for when the pandemic starts to get better. And this was maybe around June or July of 2020, and by February of the following year, there was some open mics that were starting to pop back up, and so I actually went and did my first open mic in February of 2021. And I picked, at the time I had, you know, when we had talked about it originally, I was like, oh, I'll pick one song, and that'll be good. And I picked, so I had picked three, and played them, and it went really, really well. It was a ton of fun, I had a, I had a blast, I had friends there to support me, and thought, you know what, okay, I can check it off my bucket list now. I did the open mic, next goal accomplished. And as soon as I sat back down after playing, the owner of where I was at came up to me and he gave me his business card and he said, would you like to play a three hour gig over the summer? And I was like, I mean, my immediate reaction was yes. <laughs> Not thinking and contemplating about all of the aspects that go into that. I didn't even have three hours of material to play. <laughs> so that gave me a new challenge to work at. I think the gig was in July. So they gave me about four months or five months to kind of get ready. And so I did, I spent the next few months learning new songs on both instruments and gig happened in July. It went great, it was a ton of fun. And it opened up more opportunities with other local places that were looking for local music. And so even to this day, um, about a year later, I'm still playing gigs about once or twice a month, um, both with my original music and with some covers. So that was a goal I was really happy to make happen, and I have a lot of fun with it. Um, so now the real part of why I'm here is what's my next challenge for myself? Okay, I've, I've done an open mic, check. I'm doing some gigs, check. I want to write my own original music, not just math, silly math cover songs. They're fun but I wanna actually come up with my own original lyrics and my own original music. And so that's what I spent um, the next bit of time doing. And it takes time, it takes perseverance and effort, but um, to this day I have five songs, five original songs that I've written. Um, most of them are on the guitar. I do have one I'm gonna share with you on the piano that I wrote. And I'm, I'm proud of them and I, it's really been a work in progress and it takes time, 
dedication and patience, but um, I'm going to share at least, I'm going to try to share at least four of them with you today and give you the kind of interesting backstory behind each one. You guys ready to listen to some music? All right, so I'm going to start, I'm going to stand for some guitar stuff. So the first song I'm going to share with you, I wrote um, back in around November or December of 2020. This was around the heart of the pandemic, and it's called Won't Look Back. And this was not the first song I ever wrote, but it was, I would say, the first uh, guitar song that I wrote. And my process for writing a song is I try to first come up with the chord progression or kind of the musical instrumental aspect of it, and then I add lyrics to it later. So... Best way to start doing that, you don't know what chords you want to use, you just play around on the guitar like a Ouija board. So I started doing... You guys hear a good one in there anywhere? Yeah, so that's kind of what the process is, though. So eventually, I was playing around, I'm like, this is so frustrating, like, how do people do this? And eventually, it just, it takes some time, but I found this. And it rang out nice. I was like, okay, what else can I do with that? So I knew some strum patterns. I just played with that. And I kind of added in some little... And it motivated me to keep going. And so eventually I came up with the rest of what I wanted instrumentally for the most part. Sent it to a couple friends and messaged it to them and said, what do you think? And they're like, oh, it's pretty good. What are the lyrics? <laughs> uh, TBA. <laughs> so at that point, next challenge, now I need words to go with this. So I did what I like to do when I need to clear my head. I went on a run um, with the hope of just clearing my head and coming back with a fresh perspective so that I could sit on my couch and try it again. And interestingly enough, as I was on the run, once I hit about one mile, I saw a mile marker um, on the path that I was running, and it kind of sparked an idea, because um, I was kind of thinking about just things in the past as well, and a line came to me, which was, memories are the mile markers of your life, and I thought it had a good ring for a chorus, and so I ran another five or six miles, and I wrote the whole song in my head on my run. <laughs> so I took it back to the guitar when I got home, and um, this is what I came up with. So I guess the message of that is, if you are ever stuck doing something you don't like to do, exercise can help. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so um, the message of the song, though, is really, I wrote it during COVID, and it was really like, there's some tough times in life and some things that we really just don't like. Everybody has bad moments, and I think the, the main focus is trying to push on forward and put those bad things in the past and really focus on the positivity that lays ahead, or lies ahead. So this song is called Won't Look Back. Many paths to choose from, they're not aligned. Staring off into the distance at simpler times. Flashbacks can't last forever, but I need time to reminisce about what I miss. Memories are the mile markers of my life I keep on running cause I haven't won the fight Sometimes I trip over my own past But I move along and I push on forward And I won't look back It's all about decision And compromise Wanting answers to the questions But no reply Stop the clock and take a minute Hoping for a first glance at a second chance Memories 
memories are the mile markers of my life I keep on running cause I haven't won the fight Sometimes I trip over my own past But I move along and I push on forward And I won't look back And I won't look back Now I'm stuck at a crossroads And I can't decide Sometimes the hardest thing to take Is your own advice Memories are the mile markers of my life I keep on running cause I haven't won the fight Sometimes I trip over my own past But I move along and I push on forward I won't look back And I move along And I push on forward Thank you. Thank you. So that was my first guitar song, um, which is fun to play. So thank you so much. Um, all right, so next song. Um, I always have some type of interesting backstory when I write a song. They come at the most interesting times, I think, is the other thing to share. This one came when I was cleaning out my kitchen. How many people enjoy cleaning out their kitchen? How many people have their parents make them clean out the kitchen? <laughs> okay, yeah, someday, right? So I was cleaning out my kitchen, not a fun task, and I look in my shelf, or I look in my cabinet that I had, and I see a recipe book just sitting on the shelf that I haven't touched. If you don't know me, I don't like to cook. How many people don't like to cook? Who's with me? Who likes to eat? Yes, okay, less work more enjoyable. Um, if you do like to cook, that's awesome. But I don't like to cook, and so I'm looking at this book, and someone bought it for me as like a birthday gift, and I'm like, oh man, I feel bad. A friend bought that for me. I haven't touched it once. I touched it zero times. So what did I do? I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this to write a song instead. And so that's what I did, is I wrote a song based on my recipe book, and I called it um, Recipe for Me and You. It has nothing to do with cooking. <laughs> um, it's kind of, I guess, the message of the song, or like just the theme was like, it's just like a special bond that two people share, and that's kind of just like the recipe between the two of them. And um, it's kind of an analogy, I guess. And so this is called The Recipe for Me and You. Laying out under the stars Your head placed on my beating heart And I hold you till morning's new It's the recipe for me and you and if you ever find you're searching for me and I am not there We'll find a place to hide away and we'll seek shelter there You never have to worry because all of this is true And we'll just call it the recipe Sitting out under the trees Your hair blows in the summer breeze You're humming to a brand new tune It's the one I wrote for me and you And if you ever find you're searching for me And I am not there We'll find a place to hide away And we'll seek shelter there Never have to worry because all of this is true And we'll just call it the recipe for me and you Thinking back before the start When our worlds were miles apart The secret to our recipe was serendipity you know that I will always call And I'll always catch you if you fall 
And we'll make memories old and new And they'll be just for me and you And if you ever find you're searching for me And I am not there You find a place to hide away And we'll seek shelter there You never have to worry Because all of this is true And we'll just call it the recipe for me and you. That's what I did with my unused cookbook. Thank you. I'm going to switch over to the piano, so I need to just move this over. That'll work. Everybody still hear me okay? There we go. All right. All right, so this song, <laughs> this is the first song I ever wrote. Uh, that wasn't a math song. This was back in probably July of 2020. Um, I'll get a little deep with you. I wrote the song for a girl. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yep. <laughs> you know what? Everything's a good, every, every good song you've heard of, think of a song on the radio or a song from the past, it's always a love song, isn't it? Every song has some theme connection to love, right? So I wrote the song for a girl. Um, and I think it's just a really good way of expressing yourself and just kind of saying how you feel. Uh, the funny thing is she's never heard it. So uh, you guys get to hear it, and she hasn't even heard it. So um, anyway, you can enjoy it, and it's called uh, One of a Kind. And this was the first song I ever did, kind of just as a way to get things, not onto paper, but I guess into song. So that's how it goes. Sometimes I look into your eyes And we both smile And that speaks more than words can say Whenever you dial my number The sound of your voice Shines a light on my rainy days I jump on the highway I would take a red eye flight if ever you're crying late at night moments spent with you are snapshots that remind to me you are one of a kind slip away do it at your piano our voices blending as your harmonies amaze I jump on the highway I would take a red eye flight if ever you're crying late at night Spin with you our keepsakes locked in time To me you are one of a kind Years have come and gone Still feel you and I belong You're always on the mind and in my heart A moment spent with you I wish I could rewind me, you are one of a kind. To me, you are one of a kind. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's my love song. Pythagra, like Pythagoras, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Get the mic 
adjust it. There we go. All right. We got time for about maybe one more song. So I'm going to do kind of a nice bookend. That was my first song I ever wrote. This was the most recent one I ever wrote. This was about two months ago. So this song was interesting. Um, I just realized a couple months ago that it is my 10-year high school reunion this year. So I graduated in 2012, and it's now 2022. So I, 10 years out of high school. And it kind of just got me thinking, like, what are some things I remember from high school? And I kind of just started, I was probably on a run doing this like I was the last time. And I was thinking about prom and homecoming and dances and things like that. And I just didn't have enough of a list of things I could remember. And I'm like, you know, it'd be cool to write a song about this from the perspective of what I remember you know, 10 years later, now as a high school teacher, um, from what I had in high school, and also what maybe people right now in high school would want to remember 10 years down the line. And so what I did is I sent out um, a Google forum to my um, upperclassmen that I teach this year. Shout out, who are my upperclassmen? You guys in the room, any of you? Okay, so maybe you guys are in here. Um, but I, um, I sent out a Google forum just asking for what are some things you feel like you'd like to remember 10 years down the line? And a lot, I got a lot of great feedback about things that I hadn't even thought of or things that I hadn't even remembered from high school. And so what I did is I used kind of those ideas to fill in the rest of this song that I wrote, which is really just like a capstone of what you'd like to remember years later, 10 years later after high school. Um, and so the song is called uh, Delivered to Your Doorstep. And interestingly enough, the reason I called it that is because when I was writing it, an Amazon package was delivered to my doorstep. So, um, and you'll see the connection to graduating high school in the song. So this is called Delivered to Your Doorstep. Those of you who are seniors, I hope you find relevance to this with graduation coming up soon. This one also started with me playing around like this. You guys hear a good note in there yet? And then finally, finally, after playing, I don't play much up here, so this challenged me to play up here on my guitar. I found this. It sounds kind of nice, and so that's where it started. Just go now, just go now, 
I'll just go Go to the flash drives in your mind And you'll find The first slow dance with the one you liked Cheering on the cats under the Friday night lights The day that your diploma Finally arrived hidden inside Memories delivered to your doorstep Memories delivered to your doorstep running lower on time, so I just want to kind of end with, I guess, some conclusions. So what really started out, I guess, is just a minor hobby. You know, I had taken lessons growing up for piano and a little bit of guitar, um, improved in college a little bit, but I would say what started out as a minor hobby really turned into one of my biggest passions, and I think it really all started when I was talking to my friend about doing that open mic experience and just joking about that, and that really set me on a path of, I want to do this, and I want to make this happen. And I know COVID was a hard time for a lot of us, and it was a hard time for me too, um, but I think, I'm not thanking COVID, but I don't think without COVID, I wouldn't be musically where I am today, and I don't think I would have these songs, and I don't think I'd be able to share that with you. And so for that, I'm glad that I was able to sit down at home and actually focus my mind on something that I really wanted to accomplish. Um, and I will share with this with you, um, and I never thought this would have happened, but over spring break, I actually went to Indianapolis um, and met with my vocal instructor, who, interestingly enough, um, I've worked with him for the past few years, and it was just a great find. He actually won the TV show The Voice back in 2014. Um, so that was really cool to have an opportunity to work with somebody with actual vocal training and who does that now to give back. And I recorded my five songs that I wrote in his studio. Um, so that was an awesome experience. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. And I, it, was, it was incredible. We spent 12, 13 hours just mixing, and I didn't even know the process. It's crazy. Um, but my goal is in the next month or two to get those onto Spotify. Um, so I'm hoping that that happens and it doesn't sound like it's that hard of a process. So I'm going to hopefully be able to share that with you um, and get them on my YouTube channel also. Again, that's Cam Wise Music if you're interested in hearing some, some covers that I do weekly and some math tunes, W-I-Z-E. Um, and so, yeah, the last takeaway I'll give you I think is this, because I think this can apply to a lot of pretty much all of us, is sometimes it takes a really, really difficult situation, and that could be COVID, that could be something else. Um, and though, even though it can be really hard in the moment, with the right amount of perseverance and the right amount of effort and the right mindset, it can really um, change trajectories and it can unfold to become one of the most positive silver linings of your life. And thankfully, that's what I was able to experience. So thank you for listening today on that. Thank you very much for coming. Um, yeah, so Mr. Reef, I think do we have a couple minutes if anybody has questions? We've got a few minutes if anybody has questions. Right. And I'm also, I know we're short on time. If anybody is, has questions, wants to pop by my room, I'm in 2112. I'm always happy to chat about music and stuff like that. Or you can send me an email, too, and I can chat with you. So I'm happy to do that. So if anyone has a question, I can uh, come hand you the microphone. Well, you guys think of a question. I have one. Um, what comes first for you, then? Is it, like, lyrics you get in your head and then um you it no music, usually you it's um, um minus the last song i actually did have some i mean the deliver to your doorstep i guess i had before i had a real melody but usually i develop the chord progression first and then i write the lyrics after so it just helps keep me on beat maybe it's because i'm a math teacher and i like things to be in count um but that usually helps me first is to have a chord structure and then build the lyrics as i go yeah what was the like hardest part of your music writing journey I'm sorry, could you say it one more time? What was the like, hardest part of like, writing music for you? Uh, lyrics. <laughs> Trying to find out what to say is definitely the hardest part. And that's the part I would say that makes the, or takes the most time. Um, chords, once you play around on the guitar or the piano enough, you can find something you like, but then it's a matter of, well, what do I want to say about the song? What do I want the meaning of the song to be? And that's editing. That's revising. You guys ever have to do edits and rough drafts for an English paper or social studies paper? It's not your first draft, right? And so your first take at a song is definitely not your last take at a song either. So, yeah. Um, are you still seeing that one girl you're, you wrote a song about? <laughs> Never was, actually. So, 
Uh, that's why I said she doesn't actually know about it, but I'll, I'm going to joke, actually. No, it's all good. Um, we're still kind of friends. We talk occasionally. But uh, I think the funny thing is that if they go on Spotify, then she'll hear them, right? So <laughs> um, and she'll know. So, yeah. yeah. I, I was more self-conscious about it when I wrote it because I'm like, oh, what's she going to say? What's she going to do? And I'm going to be honest, I don't really care now. So. <laughs> How you doing? How are you? All right. Um, you ever try to freestyle? Oh, man. Uh, like rap? Yeah. What's the topic? Can we do a math rap? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, math rap. Math rap. Okay. All right. Someone give me. Someone give me a beat. <laughs> you heard about this thing called Sokotoa. You never remember what's the order. Sine, cos, and tan. When am I ever gonna use this? There is no plan. <laughs> Drop the right triangle. <laughs> that was awesome. That was fun. Great. Thank you for suggesting that. <laughs> Anyone else? That's going to be hard to top, but does anybody else have a question? If you think of anything later and you want to shoot me an email or you want to stop by and just chat about music or anything, if you're into songwriting or want to know how to get started, I'm happy to chat with you about that. It's a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much yes. for coming. Have an awesome weekend.